Welcome back to the Fight Pit, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. As always, it's the boys in the house. We are here covering UFC Fight Night Burns versus Brady. Intro music. What up, what up, folks? We back. You know how we do. It's your boy, Drew. To my left, to my right, I got the Brady Bunch. We got Gageimus Maximus. Right downstairs, we got Matt Talks MMA. And then right over here, we have Sean of the Dead, Mr. Bad Beats himself, Sean Ryan Sports. Thank you guys, as always, for tuning in. We appreciate you. We love you, each and every one of you, all 423 of you, every <clears throat> single one of you. Today, we are looking at the UFC Fight Night Burns versus Brady card going down Saturday, September 7th at the UFC Apex. UFC Apex cards trying to, uh, trying to hold on, trying to redeem themselves lately. I think this one will be a good one, too. Uh, got some got some good fights on this one. I'm looking forward to this. We got a little bit of a break, but I think this will be a good one for us to come back to. I think Burns versus Brady is actually a pretty solid fight night main event. Pretty solid. I think that would I think that could co-main a uh, a pay per view if they had to. Uh, but before we get into it, I gotta let you know about our wonderful sponsor, PillowFight.co. Uh, sleep is very important, folks. It's a third of your life. You got to make sure that you are doing it right. Clearly, clearly I'm not doing it right because I haven't been using Pillow Fight. Uh, blissfully soft and shockingly supportive. Their commitment to premium foams and fibers provides superior comfort all while being soft enough to cradle you to sleep. Uh, hypothetical. Let's just say you are a, uh, an up and coming MMA fighter and you sign a fight and it just happens to be against another up and coming fighter by the name of Alex Pereira. You're going to need a good pillow and pillow fight has you covered. They're worth every penny. Invest in your rest. They don't skimp on the details and neither should you. Pillow fight is obsessed with making a difference. Every purchase at pillow fight allows them to donate pillows where they are needed most. So make sure you head on over to pillowfight.co. We will post our link down in the description. Thank you as always to pillow fight for holding it down, making sure we get that good, good sleep. Now we're going to jump on into this card. I'm going to kick us off with some undercard fighters to watch maybe get an official pick in here or there we'll see what happens uh the first fight of the night i believe it's still i believe it's a schedule for the first fight of the night last week the nathan fletcher and uh, zigamontis ramaska fight had to be postponed uh so they're throwing this one on there that <laughs> one i think uh i like a finish in that one i think that one's gonna go under two and a half rounds i got a lot of honestly I got a lot of fights ending in a finish on this card. Not afraid to admit. Uh, Andre Petrowski versus Dylan Budka. That one I don't see going to the cards either. I like Andre Petrowski in that one. Been been a rough road for Petrowski fans. He's uh, he's eleven and three. He's got eight finishes, four KOs, four subs. Coming off of a unanimous decision win over Josh Fremd back in July. Going up against Dylan Budka, seven and three. Uh, he's three and two in his last five. Coming off a TKO loss to Cesar Almeida, it happens. But I like Petrowski in that one. Not an official pick, but I do like Petrowski in that one. Uh, the next one, Yi. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce some of these names, but Yi Za and Gabriel Santos. I think Za is going to get a uh, a submission on that one. I also have that under two and a half. All finishes on the prelims. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Uh, Yi is 25 and four with 19 finishes, six KOs, 13 subs, four and one in his last five, coming off of a submission win back in February. So 
be on the lookout for Yeeza. I'm not sure what the odds look like for that one, but I would say Yeeza would be uh, one of the prelim fighters to uh, drop on your parlays. Uh, this fight, though, this fight, for sure, make sure you're tuned in for this one. Felipe Dos Santos versus Andre Lima. This one is going to be fireworks. It's going to be cracking. I love this fight. I love this fight. I looked ahead uh, a couple cards ago when we were doing our episodes, looked ahead at this one. And I've been excited about this one ever since. Felipe Dos Santos, 8-1, 4-1 and one, four and one in his last five, two KOs, three submissions, three decisions, coming off of a split decision win in February. Andre Lima, 9-0, and oh, five KOs, three decisions, and one win by other, which was the bite DQ, if you guys remember, the guy that got bit on his arm and then got it tattooed. That's the boy. I like Lima in that one. I'm going by KO. I'm going under two and a half. I'm going to make that the first official pick. But <laughs> this one, it could go either way. It could go either way. This one's going to be a sweet fight. Definitely tune in for that one. Isaac Dolgarian and Brandon Marat. Not a bad fight either. Also under two and a half. I'm telling you, these are just going to be. And then we get to Jacqueline Amorim and Vanessa Demopoulos. It's going to be a sweet fight. These are highly touted prospects. They're both rolling. They're both doing great. Jacqueline Amorim is eight and one, two KOs and six submissions. All of her wins by finish. Uh, submission over Corey McKenna in her last one back in March. She's four and one. Vanessa Demopoulos, everybody knows her. She's the one that uh, everybody picks up after the fights. She's 11 and five, excuse me. She's also four and one in her last five. And she got a split decision win in her last one over Emily Dakota in May. I like Jacqueline Amorim by decision in that one, even though she doesn't have any decision wins yet. I think Vanessa Demopoulos, she's got six decision wins. I think if you're going to have to beat her, you're probably going to have to do it by decision. I don't see her getting finished too often. Uh, I, I don't think... I think she, I'm pretty sure most of her wins are by by decision so far. But I like Amorim by decision on that one. That one's going to be sick. We also got Ryan Spann versus Ovince St. Preux. Uh, we talked a lot about it on the last one with the Cannoneer fight, him being 40 and still kicking. OSP is not getting the credit he deserves. He's 41. Made his jump back. Uh, into the UFC with a split decision over Kennedy Zekjestukwa. Je- 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 did not see that one coming. I, I remember our episode for that one. I I don't recall anybody picking OSP at all. Uh, he's 27 and 17, two and three in his last five, but going up against Ryan Spain. Anything can happen against Ryan Spann. He's coming off of a TKO loss against Bogdan Guskov back in April. He's on a three-fight loss streak. But this is a close one. This is a close one. My gut says Ryan Spann just because OSP is, like I said, 41. He's got to start slowing down at some point. But he's... He's one of those guys that's just defying the laws of nature, and he's still kicking. He's still getting wins in the the biggest stage in the world. 21 and 10, 6 KOs, 12 submission wins, and 3 decision wins for Ryan Spann. Like I said, he's on a 3-fight loss streak. I got a feeling he's, he's going to be rip-roaring, ready to go, trying to get back on that uh, in the win column. He was on a good little streak there and then started to dip. So this could be a bounce back for Ryan Spann. Gut pick, Ryan Spann. I'm saying under two and a half, of course. I didn't even have to tell you that. You already knew it. But <laughs> especially after the last one, I've learned my lesson. Definitely hedging on OSP. Drop a little, drop quarter of a unit, half a unit, OSP, money line. I, I, I Like I said, I haven't seen the lines, but you got to assume... You got to assume OSP is going to be the underdog in that one. And then the last fight on the prelims, the featured fight, Rong Zhu versus Chris Padilla. This one, again, 
under two and a half. I think this one's going to be a KO. I'm going with Rong Zhu on this one. He's 25 and 5, 15 KO wins, six submission wins, three decision wins, one other, four and one in his last five. Chris Padilla, no slouch, also four and one in his last five. He's 14 and six overall, seven KO wins, five submission wins, two decision wins. So this one, I, I I feels weird. Like I said, anytime I get the same answer over and over again, it's like a test where you get all the answers C and it feels like you did something wrong. But I got most of the, the undercard fights going under two and a half rounds. Uh, I do like Rong Zhu on that one. I like the Ryan Span over in St. Prue fight not to go the distance. Jacqueline Amorim and... Uh, Andre Lima, Felipe Dos Santos. If you only tune in for one fight on the prelims, make it Felipe Dos Santos and Andre Lima because that's I think that one's going to make it all worth it. Uh, and that's that's going to do it for the undercard for the prelims. How about you guys? Do you guys have anybody on the uh, prelims that you want to throw out there as uh, an official pick or somebody that you someone that you're looking forward to the most? On the prelims, I'm really looking forward to the Ryan Span versus OSP. I think that's a really good matchup. It is. It is. It's one of those weird ones where it does. It it seems like it shouldn't be as close as it is, but I think that's a. I think you're right. I think that's a solid matchup. Sean, you have anybody on the prelims that you want to throw out there as a as a lock? Uh I have to agree with. Uh... Agree with Matt here. I'm going Ryan Span. Uh, that's probably my lock. I'm nothing against OSP. Just 41 years old. Age does have to kick in sooner or later. So, and Ryan Span needs this win, and he needs a big finish too, because just he's had some weird losses recently. And definitely, if you look back about a year and a half ago, there was the Anthony Smith one that was like he should not have lost that by any means. So he Ron Span needs this one big time. Agreed. He's not far out. I mean, he's on a three five loss streak, but he was he was right up there finished Dominic Cruz first round. Had I think he had a string of first round finishes there for a minute over some some tough guys and uh bouncing back wouldn't be too tough for him as long as he can get get this one get this one going. Uh Gage. You got anybody on the prelims that you want the people to know about, sir? You touched on it pretty heavily. It was the Andre Lima fight. That was definitely number one on the prelims for me. Yeah, well, I'm so stoked for that one. I'm so stoked for that one. I don't know. It could go either way. It's going to be a banger of a fight. Under two and a half is my my bet pick for that one. You can put it on the board. Put it on the board. Under two and a half on that one. And Ryan Span OSP, that's... You got to make sure you're tuned in for that. Got to make sure you're tuned in for that. Uh, Let's jump on into the main card. Get us kicked off. First one. I like this one. I like this one. I'm I'm just, I'm a really big fan of one of these guys. We got Trevor Peak versus Yanal Ashmoz. And I'm going to throw it over to Sean for this one. And Sean's going to let us know who's going to win. Well, first thing is these odds are dead on correct. When I saw minus 115 versus minus 105, this is as close as a coin flip as you're going to get. Um, Yanal is 7-1, and one, four KOs, two submissions, and his he's 1-1 one one in UFC, and his loss in the UFC was a um, decision, uh, and it was his last fight. They're both on a one-fight losing streak, and then you have Trevor Peak is 9-2, Eight KOs, no submissions. If you think this guy's going to be taking to the ground, that's not what he's trying to do. He's trying to take your damn head off. Um, he is two and two in the UFC. Last three fights have all been decision. And before that, if you look at everything on his record, it's just KO wins. Um, this fight is really close because Yanal can win by decision here and kind of easily with his ground game. He doesn't take down a lot. And he does, his submissions were only his first two or three. It was, I think they were both in his first two fights in his professional career. So his two submissions are not like they're something he does often. But he does have better grappling than Trevor Peak. Trevor Peak, the only wrestling we've ever seen is his takedown defense. 
Um, but both guys have extremely good power and can take your head off. Trevor Peak is just fun to watch anytime you watch. He throws like you stole something from him. It's unbelievable. He, I'm going to be picking Trevor Peak just out of fandom, but and by KO. But if you, this is one of those fights that I can't even like. I could tell you go over or under, um, and it's still a coin flip too because you can have. A decision here too because last three fights are Trevor Peak was decision but at the same point at any given time it could be a knockout and then same thing what you you uh you know it's you legitimately he has two of his last three fights have been decision but he, the other four of his last six fights have been knockouts and so it's I would like to say knockout for this fight and hope it does happen that way because it on paper this fight is beautiful and both these guys' styles of fighting is going to be fun to watch. So I'm going to go with Trevor Peak. This is not really like a big strategic pick. This is just me being a little more of a fan of Trevor Peak because he he's angry when he fights. Like most guys, they fight and they try to play safe or smart. No, this man looks pissed the entire time he's fighting, and it's amusing, and he does want to hurt you. So I'm going Trevor Peak. I'm going knockout. I'll say round two but I'll say under one and a half rounds. So I'll be in the first minute or two in the second round. Take that all with a grain of salt though, because everything about this fight's a coin flip. I like it. I agree, dude. That's, that's the one, that's the guy that I was talking about too. Trevor Peak is just one of those dudes that's just walking forward swing. He's, he's got um, like standing back fists that he does that I love. It's just so, chaotic it's so much fun he's just you you described it perfectly he's he's he he fights like he's been looking for your ass for a while and he finally got you cornered and he's just he's trying to he's trying to get some he's trying to get some get back on you uh sean so for this one the one bet pick you said by ko is that the bet that you would share with the folks for this one or would you prefer you can do anything that you like for the one bet. It can be money line. It can be the rounds. Anything that you would say is like the one part of this fight that you would that you would throw down mm. on. I would probably say if you can make a prop bet and say by KO, TKO, and not pick a winner, that's probably your best bet because both of these guys can knock you out. But um, that would be my if you have if you could do a prop bet. But if we're strictly just doing either rounds or picking a winner i'll just i'll just stick with it it's a minus 105 it's it's something where if you want to build something i'll go with trevor peak when in this fight i like it i like it i think he's got a good shot i thought i had him win in the last one uh i did i had the same pick i had trevor pick uh peak by ko he was close to getting it but didn't quite go his way but i i this that's where I would throw mine on to. I like that. Next one up, another sick one. Another one of these guys that I really love. We're gonna throw it to Matt on this one for uh, number eleven, Matt Schnell, Matt Danger Schnell versus Alessandro Costa. Matt, all yours. Yeah, this one is a huge underdog. Um, Matt Schnell's looking like a huge underdog. Looks like a plus three eighty versus a minus 500 favorite for Alessandro Costa. And I can honestly see why. I see that uh, Matt is not doing too good in his last five fights. He is one, three, and then one uh, being knocked out twice uh, in his last two fights, once to Steve Erceg and the other to Matthias Nakalau. And I honestly think this is just a layup for Alessandro Costa. I think they're trying to get him within the rankings, and I'm going to have to go by KO for this one. Um yeah, that's not going to be my bet for that one. I dig it. You're going uh, Alessandro by KO. And what's the over under you have for that one, brother? I would say over one and a half rounds. Over one and a half. Beautiful. Beautiful. Match now one of those guys that's still like. One of those guys that you just don't know how he's still going at the rate that he's going, you know. He got and he has some exciting fights, some exciting wins. I feel like a lot of his wins are comeback wins as of late, which is tough. But 
Man, I just I always just have a, a soft spot for those those guys who have been doing it so long and they're still hanging in there. I like it. I want to I want to see him do well, but I I got to agree with you, man. The odds are not in Schnell's favor on this one. So if if he pulls off the upset on this one, power to him, man. But Costa, I like that one. Um and is uh Matt, is KO going to be your bet or do you is there another part of the fight that you would say is the the smart pick for your money? Uh, I would say KO. That's what, if I were to bet on that one, that's going to going to be by Costa by KO, beautiful, beautiful. I dig that. Like I said, finishes, man. Finishes on this one. This one's going to be an all finish card. I'm going under two and a half on the whole damn thing. And jumping over to my man Gage, another banger, bro. We got number nine, Steve Garcia versus Kyle Nelson. Uh, both these guys are riding three fight win streaks going into the going into this card. <clears throat> Kyle Nelson has been my big factor. He's been touched up early in his fights in UFC, um, being knocked out by Billy Q and a couple other people, which doesn't bode well for him going against Steve Garcia, who does put people out frequently and has a lot of first round KOs, about a under one and a half KOs and finishes, and. Both these guys don't really shoot much. So I think it's going to be a standard bang affair. Meet me in the middle. Who's going to pressure? Who's going to control the middle of the cage? And I really think Steve Garcia is going to win these exchanges. Again, Kyle Nelson has been chinned before. And I wouldn't say that he's not capable of doing it right back. But I think the striking of Steve Garcia is still just superior. Throws very hard. With a lot of power. And I'm going to go. Just because Kyle Nelson. Two of his last three fights have went the distance. I'm going to go. Under two and a half here. But if you want the money line. Go Steve Garcia KO. I agree. I like that. That's dude. Just absolute. Bangers, man. Bangers. This is another one that I got going finish too. hundred percent agree. Uh what's the uh what's the number one money pick on that one? What's the number one thing for the people to throw their money on? Well, it depends. You want to win a little more money, you want a little more safety. Uh, <laughs> whatever, safety. whatever you're cool with. I'm gonna go safety here and go under two and a half. Under two and a half. Good move. Good move. I dig that. I dig that. Man, this is... <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. If this one ends up in all finishes, I'm going to be a very rich man. I'm going to be a very rich man. This... Uh, even this... <laughs> even this co-main event with the women's fights. I'm, I, I'm going under two and a half, bro. I'm going under two and a half. Um, we're going to hit the round robin... As always, with this co-main, we have uh, women's 125-pound division number six, Jessica Andraj versus number eight, Natalia Silva. Uh, I'll kick this one off, and then we'll throw it in reverse on the main event. We got Jessica Andraj, 26 and 12. Natalia Silva is 17, 5 and 1. Jessica Andraj has 10 KO wins, 8 submission wins, 18 finishes. God damn. 8 decision wins. She's 2-3 and three in her last 5, but she, she got the split decision win over Marina Rodriguez back in April. Natalia Silva, 5 KO wins, 7 submission wins, 4 decision wins, 1 other riding, and 11 fight win streak. Uh, scored the unanimous decision win over Viviani Araujo back in February. This one, I don't see us being unanimous on this one. There's a good chance we might be on the rounds, but this one, gosh, it's very difficult to not pick Jessica Andrade by KO. Very difficult. I'm going to say that my 
My official pick for this one is going to be Viviani Arujo by submission. Of course, under two and a half. But somebody here is going by Je- is going Jessica Andrade by KO. I already know it. But this one, dude, if there's anything on this one, I, I do not see this one going to the card. So I'm going to say that my... My bet pick for this one is under under two and a half. Under two and a half, no matter do what. Do you have, do you have one? In? I'm going with Silva. Because you said Viviana <laughs> Arujo. I was like, I don't think she's fighting, my guy. Oh, my bad. Did I say Arujo? I meant Natalia Silva. Natalia Silva by submission. Uh, I got it going under two and a half either way, though. That's, I Somebody could be sleeping one way or another. This is one of those rare women's fights that I don't see going to the cards. Jessica Andrade is just a juggernaut, bro. Just crazy. She's crazy. She's a little like women's 125 pound uh, Vanderlei Silva. She's scary. She's scary. And I love it. I love every second of it. She's never been my favorite fighter, but I, I'm tuning in every single time she fights, no matter who she's fighting. Uh, but I'm kicking it off with Silva. Going under two and a half, though. Solid bet pick under two and a half on this one. Uh, let's uh, throw it down to Matt first on this one. Hit us with it, brother. I'm going to have to agree with you there. I'm going to have to also go Silva under two and a half. I think that no matter what, that this is going to end in a finish. Andrade can definitely uh, has super powerful hands and can definitely make it interesting on the feet. And I ultimately see it not going to a finish, not going to a decision either way. How is uh, how is she gonna get the finish? Do you have a a, a preference? Uh, no, I think she can get it done either submission or on the feet. But I would say uh, under two and a half for sure. Under two and a half, bang bang, bang bang. I dig it. And take it around the block. We're going to Sean. Sean, hit us with it, my man. All right, I'll jump in and be the one you talked about, Drew. Um, I'm taking up Jessica Andrade by KO. Um, just, I get burned every time I pick against, against her. It's one of these, her strength to schedule is unmatched to anyone basically. And Natalia Silva hasn't really fought too much at this moment, even though she is an incredible up and coming fighter. I don't, we don't, we haven't seen a test like this. We just haven't, the, she does have the height and reach advantage. She does have the submission game, but it's, she has to get her down on the ground to get her submitted. And I don't know if she has the wrestling ability to keep Jessica Andrade. She is a very strong woman, extremely strong legs, is able to stay off the ground. You got to, it, it's just tough to get her in those positions. But Silva does have knockout power too. She can get it done there. I just think Jessica Andrade is just going to be a bulldog getting close and get the knockout. I'm going to say it's, it's, it's tough women's fights. I'm going to say second round also. Um, yeah. But so I say not going to distance is my best bet with this because even if Jessica Andrade doesn't win this fight, I still think Natalia Silva would finish her. Um, so I would say not going to distance is my safest bet. I'm going Jessica Andrade second round KO. Dare I say under two and a half? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, that one, I, that's the only, uh, argument point that I have on that one too, is exactly how you said it too, that she's, if she tries to get Andrade down to the ground, she's going to have a hell of a time trying to keep her there. So it's, uh, I totally agree on that one. Gage round it out for us, brother. Uh, we're going to go split here because I'm also going Jessica Andrade by a knockout. Ba, 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 boom. Um, I, I don't know how she's plus money here. A ranked <clears throat> fighter against an unranked. Has had great showings, too. Her last loss was to Tatiana Suarez, and we've all made clear how we feel about her on this segment. Yeah. So... Uh, she's had win over Amanda Lemos, who's doing fighting phenomenal right now. Um, wins over Mariana Rodriguez, and I forget who she just. Oh, and Mackenzie Dern as well. 
she's only 32. Mm. So I don't I don't understand where the odds makers are coming in that this is going to be a poor fight for Jessica Andrade fighting someone who goes to the cards a lot, but does have knockout power, doesn't really go to the ground a lot. Jessica Andrade has great grappling, great grappling, great submission game, but also has dynamite in her hands and loves to throw 200 to 300 strikes of a match. I mean, a fight. <laughs> and will gladly stand there with her. And I, so I don't get it. Definitely have Jessica Andrade as my dog of the week. Have her by KO. Safe bet. You want to throw a fight to not go the distance. Dig. I like that as the dog of the week pick, too. That is a sweet dog of the week. What is that? Uh, I haven't seen the odds. Do you know exactly what her money line is? Plus 260. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Yeah, so KO for her is going to be. Oh, KO uh, method of victory for her on that one has got to be pretty juicy. I will pretty look at juicy. it right now. You know what I'm yeah, I, that's probably. I mean, if I go if I go back to back on dog of the week picks, that'd be pretty cool for me. Shout out! Oh, bro, yeah. Uh, if you guys three. weren't weren't paying attention, Gage absolutely smoked the Gerald Mearshart pick. Is... Boom! Fight. Not to go the distance. Gage, do you got the rounds on this one? Or just not to go the distance? I have just not to go the distance here. I think the difference between That's a good under, call. under two and a half versus not to go the distance in a women's fight, I don't think the odds are going to skew too much. So it's, yeah. it's safe to go in that late, late third round. Knockout, submission. Uh, yeah. Just, Andrade is now plus 200. And it's too early to go by method. They don't have methods up. That makes sense. I would probably assume that Andrade by KO is like one or two. Yeah, somewhere up at the top. Somewhere up at the top. Uh, Boom, I like it. So we got two for Silva by finish under two and a half. Two for Andrade by KO fight not to go the distance beautiful beautiful kind of how i mean i'm not surprised but that's going to be a good one that is going to be a hell of a fight hell of a fight and then we had 34 sick sick i like it and we're gonna kick off these main event picks and breakdowns we got welterweights number six the Something I noticed too. Co main and main are both number six versus number eight. Pretty cool. I dig it. Makes makes no difference at all. It's completely irrelevant, but I'm a numbers guy. We got number six, Gilbert Burns versus number eight, Sean Brady. Sean Brady opening at a minus 175. Gilbert Burns opening at a plus 145. We have the number six fighters going against number eight, and both number sixes are plus money underdogs. Rare. Super rare. I dig that. Let's take a look at the records. We got, uh, excuse me, Gilbert Burns, 22 and seven, six KO wins, nine submission wins, seven decision wins, two and three in his last five, dropped a KO loss to. That was a KO. Jack Della Maddalena in March. Uh, March 9th, 2024. Not too, too long ago. Sean Brady, 16 and 1, sitting at a pretty 16 and 1. Three KO wins, five submission wins, eight decision wins, four and one in his last five. Got the submission win over Kelvin Gastelum last December. Hasn't fought since December. Does not feel like it's been that long, but I guess it has. I guess it has. Well, he was supposed uh, to start earlier because then Vincente Luque, that fight got canceled. That's right. My man. My man. You guys are always there for me when I slip. I appreciate you so much. Um, Gilbert Burns still sitting at number six, dude. He's had a uh, he's had a hell of a, a last couple of years. Couple years. I could have swore that Gilbert Burns would be fighting for a title again after the Usman fight. I was 
damn near certain he would be back in a title fight not too long after that. That one against Hamzat, he was the first guy to make Hamzat look human. I thought that that was going to carry him for a while. It's It's been a rough road. Absolutely love Gilbert Burns. He's one of my favorite welterweights. One of my favorite welterweights. Just such a cool dude. Love his style. He's always fireworks. Always game. Just love his stuff. Love him. Hope he does well. Sean Brady going to be a tough effing out, though. A tough effing out. He's got eight finishes and eight decisions. Four and one in his last five. Uh, and he's gunning for a title shot, too. He's one of those guys that's just been up there for a little while. And he's just, he's he's been, he's been walking up the porch trying to knock on the door not quite knocking on the door of a title shot but he's 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 on the he's on the porch he's on the porch he's he's in the vicinity he's he's about to hit that he's about to be knocking on the door um let's go we'll hit him with the x-men on this one sean kick us off on this one my man all right this is another underdog that it's tough to pick against, but at the same point, you look at the records. Sean Brady has only lost to the current champion by KO. And the champ was the underdog in that fight. Um, had Khabib in his corner for that fight against Sean Brady. And that's the only time Sean Brady has lost. Uh, Gilbert Burns just came off a brutal knockout, too, that he was winning that fight. Even in the third round, he was winning the fight and just got up, ate the knee, and he was down for a couple minutes after the fight. I usually like them having a full year off after that. This is six months later, and he's having another fight. And that's my biggest thing is I, after brutal knockouts, you got to have more time off. Um, Sean Brady is good on the feet. He's great on the ground, but so is Gilbert Burns. So I don't think anyone's going to get submitted here. Just they're going to counteract each other too well. This will be mostly a stand-up fight, and I think Sean Brady does have the better striking. Gilbert Burns is going to throw a lot of looping, heavy strikes. And I think Sean Brady – I think this one – it's you look at these two and saying decisions ridiculous, but I, I have a feeling this is just going to be a five-round stand-up fight where they're just going to be swinging the whole time. I'm I'm going to take the over. I'm going to do – I'm going to say Sean Brady by decision. Brady by decision. What's the over? Are yep. we going one and a half? So I I don't know what the line is on this fight. Well, what would it be? Like two and a half or one and a half? Uh, uh, I would answer to guess two and a half with a five round fight. Yeah. Yeah. On then William say, Hill, they give us. On William Hill, they give us the option for everyone, but the odds mm. just adjust for mm. like the so like one and a half will probably be like a minus four hundred or so. But whichever one, whatever you're most confident with. I'll still say over two and a half. I just I just don't see the guys doing an, anything on the ground, and both of them have more submissions than anything, and it's that they both are great grapplers. So I think it'll be one of those yeah. cases where you just see them striking the whole time, and it's not easy to get a KO. Not that easy. So Yeah, I'm, especially I'm with these guys. Bit yeah, of a say over two and a half. Just ask Kyle Barrio how easy it is to get a KO. Yeah. <laughs> that should have oh been God. stopped, though. That should have been stopped. Oh, my Dude, God. That was, that was the difference between me winning $40 and me winning $340. Oh, oh, man. Good job on the hit, though, man. I knew it was coming. I've never gone this. I've been hitting just straight bets all year long. Never gone this long without hitting a par. Dude, I, had so again, I, I had again. I knew today. it was coming. I had again today. Baseball? Three, for baseball? Three three leg straight Yankee parlay. Boom. Boom. Nice. I haven't even checked mine, but I know I had the Yanks, so that's good news. No, they lost. That's good news. <laughs> they lost, but I Oh, they did. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. I, I, of course. I, I, Garrett Cole over strikeouts, Judge over yeah. hits, and Soto over one base, a half a base. Did Judge hit a home run again? No. Double. Get a double. And oh, so okay. got his two base bases. The sweatiest part fashion, but he got it. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I uh I agree. I agree with Sean. Fuck for six for six and a half strikeouts. <laughs> 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 
What did he get? Did he get seven? Seven. Yeah. He was at five and four <laughs> innings. And then he just take, took a sweet ass time to get the last one, the last two. Oh, Lord. Lord. I hate those two, dude. I hate those. They should be mopping. They should be mopping. Um, Gage, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it to you on uh, the next one. Let us know who you got for this main event. Looks like I'm once again agreeing with Sean here. Uh, per the name, per the name, uh, give it away very easily, very early in the show. Where, where I'm going on at least one fight. Um, Sean Brady again. Only losses to Blah Muhammad by TKO second round two years ago, I think it was. Gilbert Burns also very recently lost his by decision to Blah Muhammad. Woo. Um, Gilbert Burns has looked very good in his last fights, even though he's lost. And Sean Brady is Sean Brady. We all know who, what's going to happen there. I do think he grapples more. I do think this is. Ain't gonna be I'm just better than you in the ground kind of thing for Sean Brady in the early go. Um Gilbert Burns only has a 50% takedown defense. He only shoots 35 38% accuracy. Sean Brady dominates both of those numbers. Not as close as you think, because you think Gilbert Burns, you think super strong, great grappling. He has all those things. Sean Brady's just better. Sean Brady on the feet. Strikes at 3-7, seven, seven, I think, per minute, and absorbs 3-5-2. Gilbert Burns lands at 3.26, absorbs 3.45, I think, if I remember correctly. So he's got a negative striking differential. Just Sean Brady wins on the feet. Too. So I think they're both going to weigh down on the ground for a little bit. And I think Sean Brady, once Gilbert gets tired, just like Jack Mel that Mel Madalena did, is just to work him on the, on the feet while he's tired and put Gilbert down. So I have Sean Brady by decision. Ooh. Got picked over two and a half. Ooh, we might do it. We just might do it. Matt, let us know who you got. I'm going to have to go with Gilbert Burns for this one. I'm going to have to be that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm going to have to go Gilbert Burns. I know the, his, the level of competition that they both have faced. I know Gilbert Burns is on a two-fight win. Gilbert Burns is also 38. He's 38. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that is, although that is true, I still think that he had got it within him. You know, the level of competition isn't even close. You got Hamzat, Neil Magni, Jorge Masvidal, Bilal Muhammad, and then Jack Della Maddalena. And then compared to um, Sean Brady, you got Kelvin Gastelum, Bilal Muhammad. They both got that loss in common. Michael Chiesa, Jake Matthews, and Christian Aguilera. I, I just don't think the competition is is just really close. And I would have to say that this does go to a decision though. I don't see um, Gilbert Burns knocking Brady out or anything like that. Even though I do think he is better on the feet, I think that uh, Brady will be a bit more cautious and take notes from that Bilal Muhammad loss. I probably um, got better at the boxing department from that loss and became a better fighter. But I still think that Gilbert Burns has what it takes and belongs in that position that he's at yeah buddy we did it we did it we finally got a unanimous uh i am also going with sean brady by decision and i am what what's that we don't have unanimous we are unanimous that it is going to go over on the rounds <laughs> That is the only thing we've been unanimous on so far. Um, the uh, this like like you guys were saying, man, this is such an even match on the ground. I think it's going to be a stalemate on the ground if it if it gets there. Both of these guys are prone to avoiding the ground at, at times, and I ultimately think that Brady will eke out the decision. I think it could be close. I don't know if it'll be quite unanimous. 
I would say it's going to be Brady, Brady three rounds to two, four rounds to one, somewhere in that range. Uh, excuse me. I do think Burns is for sure going to have a, a wildcat uh, round at some point where it's going to look like the tide's turning. And if, to Matt's credit, if he gets if he gets rolling downhill on him, he does have the capability of getting the finish. He does have the capability of holding the driver's seat. He's got that veteran experience. He's seen it all, done it all. There's nothing that Brady's going to throw at him that he hasn't seen before. But I think that Brady, the, the odds probably favor him to get the decision. So it's not going to be too much of a uh, too much of a hit on the bank if you do throw it just on Brady money line. But I got it going over two and a half. So this one, that is the only unanimous pick we have for you guys on the group picks is that this main event is going to go over two and a half rounds. But we got three for Brady, one for Burns. Co-main event, we're split two and two, Silva and Andrade. That one, we got uh, all finishes on that one, though. So fight not to go the distance for Natalia Silva and Jessica Andrade. That's another unanimous pick. And boom, that's all, folks. That is all. A lot of finishes on this one, though. A lot of finishes on this one, though. I'm definitely going to have an under two and a half parlay going for most of them. I think on the prelims, I see, uh, where were the ladies? Demopolis and Amorim. I think that's I think that's the only one early on that's going to go to a decision. I see a lot of these going for the, uh, the under two and a half on this one. We got Gage's Dog of the Week. He's been rolling on Dog of the Week. I think Gage has, if my memory serves me correctly, we've been, Dog of the Week has been hitting way more often than not. There was uh, Hyder Emil. We got Hyder Emil. There was another one since then, too. Uh, Gage got nailed it with the GM3 last week. And he's going with Jessica Jessica Andrade. Andrade on that one. Uh, Matt, who is your vote for Dog of the Week on this card? Mm, That's a good one. I would have to go Gilbert Burns. I think that he's a Dog of the Week for sure. Burns, beautiful, beautiful. I'm going to try and pull up the odds on that and see if they got him on there too. Sean, who do you got? I'm going to go. Okay, plus sick. Burns, sweet. Sweet. And I don't anticipate that they have the methods up. Uh, William Hill has Burns at a plus 160 right now. Not bad. Not bad at all. Oh, I forgot. I had on, I picked Andrade, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Andrade. It's my underdog of the week. Sorry about that. Andrade, no, that's cool. She's yeah. plus two thirty right now on William Hill. That's another good hit. She's plus two hundred on Hard Rock, Sean. Plus two hundred. All right, but definitely sprinkle on Gilbert Burns too for the I mean, that I'm Yeah, there, there's a he's damn good. Might as well throw a dog parlay on a fight night. Yeah. See what yeah. happens. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. If we go uh, through William Hill right now with just Andrage and Burns, you're looking at a plus 758. Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. Um, I think that's, yeah. I'm going to, even though it goes against my pick, I'm going to go with Andrage because I like that. I like that plus two, two and some change. And I think Andrade getting a knockout is. I like Andrade to get a knockout before I like Burns to get a, uh, to get a finish or a, a decision on Brady. I think Brady's just going to be tough, man. He's just going to be tough. He's been rolling. 
And then uh, how about some locks, gentlemen? We have any locks we want to throw out there? Who is like the minus 400 on the card? There's like a minus 400. Who was that? Um, Isaac Dolgarian is a minus 2,500. Yeah, we'll we go, got... And that's on the main card? Uh, that's on the prelims. And then oh. we got... Alessandro Costa is a minus 500. Ryan Spann yeah. is a minus 330. Jacqueline Amorim is a minus 320. Yeah, I'd go with Costa then. 550 and then... Yeah. Costa. Yeah. Good call. The co main and main events, there's just... The underdogs are too live to to make yeah. either one at lock. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Petrovsky is a minus 310. That's an early, ooh, that's an early favorite for a lock, I think. I Not going to be who I go Lima. with, but. Which one? I was going to go Andre Lima or Ryan Spann. Lima is a good one, too. Lima is a good one, too. That's a good money pick, too. He's at minus 175. I think that's a solid pick. That's a solid pick. He's. It's so difficult to pick against him, man. He just, he makes it happen. He makes it happen. Even in the DQs, man, he's pulling out wins on it and just swagging, just swagging, pulling out uh, bonuses from that. The Garcia fight? The Garcia Ryan uh, Nelson fight? No, I still got it. Oh, I, say, I don't have it here in Hard Rock. That's weird. Um, uh, William Hill has Steven Garcia at a minus 175, Kyle Nelson at a plus 150. Yeah, that's it. Steve Garcia wouldn't be too bad of a, of a lock either. I like no. that one. But uh, for the sake of the vote, I will go Costa against Schnell. As well. And I'm going to I'm gonna stay away from Dolgarian because those those favorites up in the thousands have have not been have not been doing me justice lately. Who was the last one? Zachary Reese, I think. Uh, I can't remember what he was at. He was a, it was somebody, Nolan, Nolan. Was that yeah. like minus 1200 or something? Like a decision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoever bet Tom Nolan to go to decision, bravo to you. Bravo to you. I know you made a, you made a good little bit of coin last week. Boom. I like it. So we got just to recap, we're going Ooh, under two and a half for most of the undercard. We got Trevor Peak under one and a half by KO. We have Alessandro Costa over one and a half by KO. We have Steve Garcia under two and a half. And then we are split Silva and Andrade, but we all have that fight not to go the distance. And in the main event, we have three for Brady, one for Burns, and everyone has that fight over two and a half. So we got a couple unanimous rounds on those ones. Good looks. Good looks. Gentlemen, I like it. I like it. This is going to be a good one. This is going to be a good one. Make sure you guys are tuned in. Any final thoughts? Any take backs? Any regrets? Any rebuttals? <clears throat> I think we pretty much hit it all. Hell yeah. Good shit, dude. Good shit. You guys are awesome. I appreciate you. Thanks for uh, thanks for partying it up with me again today. We will see you guys back here again for the next one. The next, I think following Burns and Brady, is it not? 306. UFC? 306. 306. Woo! Woo! Any early, any early drops on that one, guys? That's a uh, Noche? That is the Noche. Yep. Do we have do we have any early picks for Marab and O'Malley? Sugar Sean. I'm going O'Malley. O'Malley by KO. I also have Valentina by by KO. Ooh, you got her to get it back. Yeah. Got her to get it back. I like that. Do you think she's going to be the underdog this time? Yes. Yeah. 
Let's see. Is it open? Is it open? It is. And I can we give have... you my three picks for the last three fights of the night. Shevchenko is currently at a minus 105. So pick him. Yeah, Gage, go for it. Uh, Diego Lopes. Diego Lopez. Just straight up money line. Because... It's, the skill set's close, no matter where, which way they are. But I, think, I think Diego's just going to just look great in every facet of the game since he's been fighting. And handle diversity well. And then Valentina and then Sugar Sean. I like it. Lopes is at a minus 170 on my end right now. And we got Shevchenko at a minus 105. Grasso at a minus 115. And oh my gosh, Marab Davalashvili is currently the favorite. Yeah, smash, all right. smash the fucking trigger shot with the dogs. <laughs> Smashing man, hammer, hammer, O'Malley, hammer and O'Malley. Oh my goodness, I did not see that coming. Holy crap. It's probably just like uh, the, the tank and everything of him shooting 30 takedowns in a fight over five rounds. That's you probably... Don't sleep on Sean goes to BJJ tournaments all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like he's yeah. not a slouch by any means. Rob's just very short, very stocky, very strong. Yeah. but That's a very good point. People still think that the secret to beating O'Malley is to wrestle him. And Aljo, very short. Very stocky, very strong, very good. No tank. chance, <laughs> no chance, no chance. You, you got it to every fight. As they say it all, all the fucking time. Every f round starts on the feet, and that's danger. That's danger. I was saying, uh, Marab's just his striking is just it's not good. It's below average for the guys. No. If you guys aren't following Matt, Matt Talks MMA, make sure you guys do that. I was saying on the in the comments in his uh, <clears throat> his O'Malley Marab one that uh, Matt, I think, was saying that that's one of the fights that scares you the most. Is that the right one? Yeah, that was the right one. Yeah. And then the Tafuria and Holloway one. Marab carries his right hand low and gets rocked with a left hook in every fight. Every single fight. Uh, O'Malley, of course, is he's right hand dominant, but you, get your Sean, hands up. Sean's feints just are very, very good. He's very technical. Rob might not catch a left hook. He might catch a left knee or a left high kick. And yeah, you know, seeing how that goes, if Sean kicks you in the head or knees you in the face, your chin isn't Marlon Barris. It's just not. No, no. He got he almost got put out by uh, Marlon Marias, and I don't see Marias hitting harder than than O'Malley does at that weight. Henry Cejudo. He does hit it? hard. He does hit hard though. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Cejudo. What was that? Cejudo. Oh, he got dropped against Cejudo too, I believe, with the left hook as well. Yeah, first well, round. I mean, Cejudo's been in striking. A lot since he got in the UFC. Like he he has improved his stand up since he True. was champion and everything. So I don't but see his striking is not Sugar Sean. No. no, and I don't see Marab being able to walk off a, a Sean O'Malley uh, left high kick if that if he lands shin to chin over that right hand. I think it's I think Marab is out. Also, because Sean's tall for the weight. They don't think he's strong, and that, I think that's a misconception. Of right, Sean. right, and with Tim Welch too, you know his grappling. You know he's doing nothing but grappling right now. Nothing but grappling. He's working on his takedown defense. He's working on wrapping up a guillotine off of a double leg. All of that, it, and you know that's all he's doing. He's going to be ready for it. And Sean again the. PJJ background, he's gonna be he's gonna be comfortable if he's on his back. He's gonna be pursuing something. So Marab's just not gonna be able to sit there. 
Because Barab's not a submission threat. It's not. Not much, no. Excuse me. And Sean O'Malley, he went with Gilbert Burns. And uh, he submitted uh, Gomi. He submitted Gomi. Like, that's... Submitting Gomi is... That's a feather in your cap, bro. That's a feather in your cap. A hundred percent. But, all right. We'll wrap this one up, guys. Now, Thank you, guys. Future, future Max Holloway. Double champ. Put it up. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think to look at that one. Um, really? Oh, my really? gosh. Oh, my gosh. Where are we at? Where are we at? Holloway plus 165. Count it. Smash. Count it. Smash. Count it, baby. Count that. Oh, I love it. And Whitaker. Whitaker against Shemaev is a plus 145. They just want us to be rich. They want us to be rich, man. I mean, and one then, of them's uh, not hitting. But, like, I'll be damned if I'm not taking all three. Of course. Of course. Oh, dude, I might parlay. I'm going to do a futures parlay with all of those. All of those. Holloway, O'Malley. Uh, Whitaker, Shevchenko. Oh, I like it. I like it. Okay, boom. Wrap it up. <clears throat> Thank you guys for joining me, gentlemen. I appreciate you guys. We lost Matt, but Matt's good. That's good. You got his picks in. Uh, everybody, make sure you guys subscribe to The Fight Pit. Just search up The Fight Pit House Call on YouTube. The official Fight Pit on Instagram. You can find all of us on that page as well we appreciate you thank you for the support we will see you back here for the next one peace